Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. Today we are going to rank Manchester United's summer transfer windows from 5 to 1 on who we think is the best signing and will be the best signing. I just want to say it's not their fault we haven't got Sancho, a centre-back and everybody else. So we're going to rank them based on them as individuals, looking at price, potential and ultimately what who we think is going to do well at Manchester United and not so well. I did think about calling the show... Um, predict your biggest flops from this transfer window. But I thought that was way too negative. So, I mean, effectively, the people who are, who are down near the bottom are probably the most likely that we're predicting to be flops. But ultimately, get your top fives in below. This is going to be my top five on who I think is going to be the best signings, starting off with the person who I think will probably not be the best signing. And look, as I said, it's not from a negative point of view, the whole point of competition. We're not, a, you know, we're not one of them school sports days where everybody wins. No, if you come first, you win. And if you come last, you lose. Doesn't mean I've got it right. Doesn't mean you've got it right. Just means we're looking at the quality of the signings and predicting who are going to be the most valuable for Manchester United this season. So in at number five, we've got, uh, and obviously the five are... Palestri, uh, Tellez, Van der Beek, Cavani and Ahmed Traore. So they're the five we're ranking. Anybody else? Low knees, younger players? No. So Palestri's in at number five. And basically he's in at number five because I don't know much about him. Nobody knows much about him. He's a little bit older than Ahmed Traore. He's going to be 19 in December. Uh, games in Uruguay. A raw talent, well scouted. We don't know much about him. There's an expectation he's going to go straight into the first team. And I think this com this this accumulates to me into a player that I think is the least likely um, to succeed and probably the least exciting signing of the five. And look, he's very exciting. So in many ways, I think the five signings United do have done have an element of excitement to them. They should have more elements of excitement to them. You know, they should be the Jaden Sanchos of the world, but they're not. And Palestri is exciting, but for me, it sort of reminds me of a, a sort of, um, I don't know how old many of you are, but the sort of PK signing, the Rossi signing, even the Javier Have Hernandez signing. And look, they all on, went on to have good careers. Um, but I, I just think with him, we are relying a lot on, um, on our scouting network. And I think also there is... I'm I'm fighting against this myself, but £7 million for an 18-year-old 18 uh, 18 from Uruguay, expectation should not be he's going to walk into the first team. And all I'm, all I'm hearing is he's a first-team player, he's a first-team squad player, and I think that is going to be really difficult for him to come in and do. So he's my number five. Uh, in at number four is Cavani. Now, this is going to cause um, some upset and uh, uh, some disagreement, which is great. But Cavani for me is um, our fourth best, our fourth best signing. I've, I've got a list. Our fourth best signing, because I I think I mean realistically, I'm I, in many ways I'm actually being pro Cavani here because I don't I'm not going to put him at number one or number two because I don't actually think I think if he does hit those I'm going in with low low expectations with Cavani is what I'm saying. He could set the Premier League on fire and I really hope he does. I hope he's the gasoline. The, and, and, and the spark and boom, you know, he, he scores 30 goals. He's an absolute revelation. I really hope that. And look, as I've said before, for the money we're paying his agent, for the money we're paying him, he should be one of the Premier League's best strikers. But I have my concerns. I think it was a desperate signing. I think nobody else wanted him. Um, and I do wish him all the best, but we've given him the number seven. I just think we've set ourselves up for, to fail with this. And it's not his fault, but the number seven shirt, the, the big wages, the big signing on fee for his agent, and the fact that he's you know, 33 and a half, he's not played much football, and actually the last 18 months of his career have ha has had a few injuries, I think he's up against it. So look, I would love to say Cavani was, you know, I think he's the best signing and he's got the best chance of success. I think, to be honest with you, I nearly put him at five. I think he's actually probably got the most chance of flopping because of the things I've just said there. I really want him to succeed. I really do. And I really like the player. But I just feel that, you know, I'm going into it with lower expectations than a lot of people because I actually do know quite a lot about what he's been doing for the last 18 months, what his career has been like at the last couple of years at PSG. And how much petrol he actually has got in the tank. I just hope he has got enough petrol to sprinkle it all over the Premier League and light it up. But we'll see. So four for Cavani for me. Number three, and some people should would say he should be below. Uh, he should be down at number four. But actually, Ahmed Traore is the one that excites me very much so from this transfer window. Now again, I've not seen him play. I'm not watching. I'm not watching youth games on YouTube. Bloody hell! I mean, come on. You know, he may as well play. He may as well play on FIFA. I, I, I mean, look. 
I don't get massively excited about Manchester United youth players. You know, you listen to what people are saying. You, you, they, they'll go, this player's really good, watch out for him. But until they play in the Man United first team, you know, Greenwood, Rashford, they were exciting when they started playing in the first team and you go, bloody hell, they can do it at first team level. What they do in the reserves, what they do in the youth football is irrelevant in many ways because it's relevant that it gets them the chance in the first team, but then they've got it, the journey really begins. So for me, what Ahmed Traore has done, you know, in training for Atalanta or in youth teams or anything like that, that's given him this opportunity at Manchester United. And what he's going to do in a Manchester United shirt in the first team is what's going to define whether he's a good player or not. But, but what I have been doing, and I'm sure many of you have been doing as well, is listening and reading to a lot of players and a lot of uh, a lot of people in the game who have spoken around about this player, and he's certainly a very very exciting signing. And I've just got a feeling with him that we might be. I'm not. No, I'm not saying Ronaldo. I'm not saying Ronaldo. But I'm. I'm saying maybe a Greenwood, maybe a Marcus Rashford. That M Rash Marcus Rashford, that level of a player that could come in and really excite us. And look, that will do for me. So I'm very excited about him. The only thing I would say is. When we're looking back on this video at the end of the season, am I going to be right? I don't know that Traore will get a lot of game time before the end of the season, but longer term, I'm quite excited about him. So I would rank him in at number three. Uh, my number two is Alex Tellez. Now, Tellez to me is a player that is, surely he will start. I say surely, I'm not, I'm not taking a dig at Luke Shaw. I'm a big fan of Luke Shaw, but surely Tellez will go straight into the team. I mean, there's no doubt he was Porto's best player and he's a left back. He's one of the best left backs in Europe. Um, 20, I think he's 27, 28 now. Um, so, you know, he, he's not a player for the future like Traore and Palestri. He's a player for the now. Um, I think we're going to play a back five, unfortunately. So, look, Tellez would be probably one of the big uh, bonuses in that, attacking down the left-hand side. He's got to adapt to the Premier League and, and that's not always a given. But... I think he will suit the Premier League. You look at the you look at the you look at Premier League left backs that do well. Robertson, even Chilwell. I don't think Chilwell defensively is very good, but offensively he's good. Robertson offensively is very very good as well. And I think Tellez, whether he can adapt to the Premier League defensively, offensively he should. You know, and this is something I've seen in the Premier League for years, going back to people like Zola, Klinsman, you know, all the way through the years with Henri Burkamps and everybody. Flair and attacking talent tends to do well in the Premier League. So I think Tellez, attacking-wise, is going to be a real asset for Manchester United. And I do think that he will be a key player for us. So I'm going to put him in at number two, which means my number one is Donny. Uh, you know, I think people are sleeping on Donny van der Beek. I think because he's not a signing that we did towards the end of the transfer window, we got him in in August, he's not started games. I think Donny van der Beek in many ways, and, and not no, not in many ways. I think with fans, everybody's a big fan of Donny van der Beek, but I think he's almost become the forgotten man in an odd way, maybe with the media, maybe even with the bloody club. He should be starting games. I think he is the best signing of the summer, and I think he is a player that can become a Manchester United great. I really do. I think, you know, and when I say great, I don't mean, I'm not talking, you know, I'm not talking Cristiano Ronaldo or Eric Cantona or or even a David Beckham. But what I am talking is, I think he's got that thing. And I, but I think we integrate it. I think the thing that worries me about Van der Beek is that his agent's talking about him, you know, oh, he should be playing games. We don't want to start off by mismanaging a player like this. He's a fan favourite already and we, we've, we've hardly even played him. We need to get him on the pitch. He needs to understand what Manchester United's all about. He needs to feel that love that he'll get from the support. And you'll end up with an Ander Herrera sort of player, I think. I think with a player that really gets it, maybe a little like Bruno as well, a player that really gets it, understands what the club's all about, understands what the fan's about and really gives everything on the pitch but also has that ability on the pitch as well. You know, tenacious Good first touch passer, can score goals, takes up good positions, exciting player. Donny van der Beek needs to find a way into the first team ASAP. And look, how that's going to happen, I don't know, because Bruno's the first name on the sheet for me and Pogba seems to be the first name on the sheet for Oli. So where do you find a place for Donny van der Beek without completely uh, uh, mis mis misinterpreting what United should be? I don't think a diamond midfield is what Man United should ever be. But we do need to get Donny van, van der Beek into the team. And I think he will get into the team because eventually he will get his opportunity. And when he gets his opportunity, I think he will take it. And I think he will be one of the better Premier League uh, midfielders. So to me, Donny van der Beek is number one. And I, and I think he is our best signing. And I think over the years, he will prove to be a, a very good signing for Manchester United. I see him, I mean, what is he, 23? I see him at Manchester United. I mean, look, probably 27, you're going to get Barcelona after him. I, 
I think he is that good and I think his potential is that good and I think the Premier League is going to bring the best out of Donny van der Beek but he's got to get into the team but for me he is number one so ranking my top five uh, transfers of the summer Donny van der Beek is at number one Tellez at number two Traore at number three Cavani number four and Palestri at number five what is your top five who do you think is most likely to flop do you agree what I've said get in the comments smash a like on the video and uh, yeah have your say